There are few cars more iconic than the 1980s Porsche 911. The shape is instantly recognizable and positively timeless. And to this day, that generation of 911 is about the most robust and durable platform Stuttgart has ever offered. It racked up just as much success on the racetrack as it did on the showroom floor, and legions of enthusiasts since have proven that with proper maintenance, it can be essentially driven forever. You may remember BBI Autosport from the first ever episode of Tuned. These guys build everything Porsche, from huge power standing mile monsters to fully prepped GT race cars, fast daily drivers, and everything in between. So, when co-owner Joey Seeley wanted to build his perfect weekend warrior, of course, it had to be a 911. But, for the first time in BBI's history, this 911 would be cooled by air. Three years of work later, and this is the result. A modern vision of what the GT3 RS would be had it existed in 1985. And we think that even Porsche's top engineers today would appreciate Joey's subtle details. From the repurposed rear wing, to the vintage look HRE wheels, to the stripped yet clean and tidy interior, to the exhaust plumbed directly through the rear bumper, it's clear that this 911 showed up to party. This is the type of car you'd expect to see vintage racing at Laguna Seca, and though you may see it at the track, a runway, autocross, or car show on the weekends, from Monday to Friday, it's just how Joey gets to work. We think it bridges the gap perfectly between race car, show car, and driver, which is why, once again, we will demonstrate that all great drive stories start like this. Get your commenting fingers ready. Tuned is back. There is really a lot to love about this car. You know, first and foremost, of course, is the weight. Under 2,200 pounds wet, and with a 3.6 liter flat six, making 275 horsepower at the wheels. You know, that's many hundreds of pounds lighter than stock with a hundred more wheel horsepower than stock. So the power to weight ratio of this car is pretty brilliant. The sound is off the chain. Incredible. Only thing is on the 80 mile transit down here, I sure got a lot of it and required some Advil afterwards. Working with the brilliant minds at BBI offers many rewards, and only one downside, location. The nearest good roads are nearly 80 miles from the shop, and that means a long, loud transit, in which I'll get accustomed to this car that probably wants me dead. Lesson one, if the owner leaves earplugs in the glove box, even he knows it's too loud. Lesson two, 80s 911s, especially when modified to this level, are not exactly easy to drive. That's part of their charm. It takes a simultaneous firm hand and a soft touch, perfect timing, and plenty of patience. Like a high maintenance girlfriend and one that makes just as much noise. There is nothing in this car. That's why it's so light. There's no climate control of any kind. There's no radio. There's no power door locks. There are power windows. The mirror doesn't really work. No insulation or sound deadening uh, anywhere. Uh, there aren't even vents here. But the car runs on 100 octane, which we can't get around here. So we have to make sure we can get the car back to Joey on the tank of gas that we're using. It's like camping. There's no heat, no AC, no radio, no carpet, solid suspension bushings. It's really loud. Uh, yeah, it's like I said, it's a track car that is street legal. 
It starts with ERP's uh, 935 suspension control arms and subframes uh, from the 935 race cars back in the day. KW competition triple dampers, uh, Terrid engineering sway bars and drop links and camber plates. So everything solid. Uh, big Brembos uh, from Race Technologies, uh, HRE wheels, the 935 look wheels, kind of a, a bold statement uh, for the street anyways, like a show wheel. The motor is a 3.6 liter uh, flat six from an RS America that we were supposed to reseal, which is the famous last words. We opened it up and then Jared, my engine builder, went a little haywire with the Tim and now it has uh, basically a stronger and lighter bottom end than the 993 RSR. Uh, it's got titanium connecting rods from the GT3 cup car, GT3 oil pump, big, uh, big duration cam, high compression pistons, high rev springs, pretty much just about everything, including a AEM standalone that we had tuned by our friend Mikey next door at AutoWave. I swear to God though, 275 at the wheels never felt so fast. <laughs> this thing rips. <laughs> Oh, and it stops really good too. I mean, not much pedal pressure required there. Big Brembo brakes doing their job on the Falcon tires. The Recaro seats, real comfortable. This is, of course, my special seat because I can't fit in Joey's seat. So they keep this one in the shop. When I want to come drive the car, they pop it in for me in the big boy size. Now, before you guys get all up in arms that I'm just describing driving any old 911, not this one in particular. Alex Roy has a 1987 Porsche Carrera that I took out for about 200 miles in preparation for this. My homework is very difficult, I know. And there, the differences between that car and this car are basically like the differences between a modern Carrera and like a GT3 RS. You know, way lighter, way louder, way more responsive much more like a race car inside, much more Spartan. The front bumper is uh, a replica of the roof Yellowbird uh, back in, what was that, 87. Uh, just a nice clean look, but still not getting too far out of what the original you know, design of the car was. Not too new school, not too old school. We closed the sunroof, uh, welded it shut, so that lost another 50 pounds or so off the top of the car, you know, way up high. The rear bumper is a replica of a 74 RS, but it's a little bit wider for the rear flare. Uh, that we put the exhaust through the through the bumper next to the license plate, which we had We've always had an idea of doing that, you know, just doing something kind of clever um, And then the tail is from a 76 Turbo Carrera. They don't make the the rubber um, Black foam piece anymore for that tail So I had to take the original Carrera tail rubber trim it down and shape it to fit this one Which gives it a little more kick up in the back the only challenge with building the car is uh, a budget uh, because you know I, I don't you know the shoemaker has no shoes so budget and uh, time you know I always felt guilty working on it when I've got customers cars here so it took it took a little while now it's finally done and it's it's paid off and the challenges now nah, there really wasn't too many too many challenges except for we're not versed in the air cooled so much as we are in the, the newer water cooled cars. I just find it interesting that, you know, after being around all that horsepower all the time, all that technology, all that boost, you know, he wants this. Light, no radio, no air conditioning, no anything. Sort of how I feel after doing two seasons of Tuned. Forget horsepower. Let's keep things light and raw dog. There's a lot of little details in the car that really give you a great indication of the car's purpose. You know, the, the, the CNC'd aluminum footrest on the floor, the one-piece, you know, shifter, no boot, there's nothing to clutter it up, the Momo Prototipo wheel. You know, now that we've learned that the new GT3 RS and the new Turbo are not going to come with manual transmissions anymore, it's really nice to know that these chassis will be out there you know, and for what is probably a lot less money, you could have this. Oh yeah. <laughs> roll up to any car show, roll up to any racetrack, any event, any Targa, a bull run event, and just have the coolest car around, man. Cause this is a classy move. And I love that it's not a show car. It's not mint. It's got nicks and chips on it. 
because he drives the hell out of it. People like uh, vintage stuff now. They like anything that's uh, got craft, you know, craft beers and craft coffee and all that stuff. So they like like the old character of this car. Um, and they do like that it's nasty. You know, it's loud, it's low, you know, it's got style and it's surprisingly fast. You know, they're not expecting that out of 1985 technology. The current trend with the, the wide body stuff like RWB is pretty cool. We considered doing it, uh, but for, for us, form follows function. And I wasn't gonna be doing big, big power. Uh, I more wanted to go lighter and slipperier. You know, like, a, like the 996 cup car is nice and narrow and just screaming fast. You know, all we did was just massage the fenders for a little more wheel clearance under compression. Not necessarily a wider tire, which we do have wider tires, but it was more for up travel. I'll admit I was a little torn when I first saw it, when he said white wheels. I was like, oh no, you didn't just say white wheels. But seeing him on the car, it's really got a Porsche Motorsport thing happening there. Sort of a Group B, you know, Porsche 935 race car look. On HRE wheels, brand new modern wheels. That's my favorite thing about this car. It's a really proper, seamless integration of old world feel, old world vibe with new world technology driving it. I hope they build more of these so I can buy one. Though the car never skipped a beat, it was a long day. Joey's Porsche is hot, loud, unforgiving if you're not brave enough to trust it, and keeps you on your toes more so than nearly any other streetcar I've driven. It beats you up with its heavy controls and booming exhaust, and confirmed in my own head that no, I have no interest in building a summer home inside of a muffler. However, as an example of what an old Carrera is capable of when built right, Joey's car is simply perfect. It's stupendously fast, bulletproof reliable, gorgeous and tasteful from every angle, and there isn't a weak link to be found anywhere in the car. You can literally feel that the owner knows race cars and knows them well. And without any insulation or rubber to soften the blow, every part of your senses feels that engineering at work. The completeness of the build becomes immediately apparent the first time you chuck it into a corner. In the beginning, I said that this 911 is what a GT3 RS might have been had they made one in 1985. But the truth is, it's not. It's much better.